come to the first part of the dead code elimination algorithm. Uh, the second part concerns uh, re uh, removing uh, branches. Okay, so what, uh, what we do is to first collect all so-called pre-live statements, that is those which can um, affect program, the visible program output. And that means, for instance, return statement, call to unknown or known uh, function, I mean function which is known to affect output such as printf, uh, but a call to um, a, uh, a math function uh, which uh, not necessarily will affect output is not marked as pre-live. Okay? Um, but the calls to unknown functions, then they are marked as pre-live, of course. Uh, writing to memory is marked as pre-live, but reading from memory is not. Say uh, we have this uh, read through a pointer. If P is invalid and we get a seg fault when we run the program, then we are allowed to optimize away this uh, segmentation fault uh, according to both C and C++ standards. Since uh, getting a segmentation fault, I mean reading through reading through a, an invalid pointer is undefined behavior and valid behavior includes not crashing. I mean valid behavior created by the compiler. So we, uh, oh, it's the goal for an optimizing compiler is not to be kind to bug a program, but to make any program, assuming it is correct, as fast as possible. If it has bugs, that's not our problem. So we start with collecting these uh, pre-live statements and uh, mark them as live. And then we collect them in a work list and take one thing at a time from the work list. And uh, say we take S from the work list, this add for instance. And then we say that V is uh, the, uh, the vertex S belongs to. So then we mark uh, uh, V as live as well. Then we go through each operand of S. And if, it's, if uh, they are not already marked as live, we mark them as live and add them to the work list. Then we need to mark the conditional branch, not only the, but all conditional branches, which uh, uh, decide that we will e be executed. M that means uh, uh, conditional branches in vertices on which V is control dependent should also be marked as live. So in, in this case, uh, we say that, uh, I mean here, we, we say that uh, um, U has, U, V is control dependent on U and U has a multi-way branch. Okay, so what is meant by that? When we have the three address code, it's uh, typically branch equal, for instance equal, and then an unconditional branch. It's uh, simpler to say that this is one branch and we mark both as live. And uh, we will also mark, put uh, the conditional branch on um, the work list. Uh, the unconditional branch uh, has no input, obviously, so it's not uh, needed to put on the work list. It's sufficient to make it uh, live. Okay, so then we continue until the work list is empty. And what we can do then is to uh, remove all uh, statements which are not live, but we keep uh, labels and branches even if they are not live. And we simplify the control, control flow graph uh, using uh, this uh, simplify algorithm. Okay, so how does that work? 
Well, <coughs> say we have uh, this uh, control flow graph and the green are live vertices, meaning they have a statement which is live. What we want to do is to avoid branching through uh, vertices which uh, have no live statement. So what we want to do is to, for instance, if we are going to three, we will not jump to two first. Instead, we should just jump to three uh, directly. And from here, we should, if, I mean, if we are not going to to three, we should go to seven directly and skip all this. How can we find which vertices to skip? Well, we can use the uh, immediate dominator in the reverse control flow graph. That's uh, written as immediate uh, post dominator. Okay, so let's see what, what happens. We start with marking the uh, exit vertex as live. Here it was live already since uh, that should never be uh, removed and we want to keep it. Uh, okay, then we have a variable modified and this modi uh, modified variable is a, says simply that we should update or recompute the dominator tree due to we have changed the control flow graph. Okay, so what we do is to go through one vertex as a, at a time and check if it's uh, if it's not live, we don't do anything with it. Otherwise, if it is live, we uh, continue and check uh, each successor. And if the successor is live, we don't do anything either because then we should just use the branch to go there so we don't remove it. And instead, if the successor is not live, then we want to find the best way to go to somewhere else, namely to uh, some other vertex here. <coughs> the question then is, which vertex should we branch to? Uh, so, uh, we can see in this case, we have um, a successor of one, which is not live. Okay, so we should branch uh, to three instead. How can we find three? It's uh, using this loop. Uh, we, we take the um, immediate post dominator and follow immediate post dominators up in the um, dominator tree in, in the reverse uh, control flow graph or the post dominator tree. And we branch from one to the first live, um, uh, as a, I mean the, the, the nearest uh, live post dominator ancestor in the in the post dominator tree of two, which is three. Okay, so we skip all those uh, which are not live. F uh, for instance, it's more clear to see here. Uh, when we uh, have uh, the case of branching from one to nine, then uh, we don't want to do that. Instead, we, we follow post dominators up. And uh, the first uh, post dominator, um, immediate post dominator of nine is 10. And then it's also dead. So we will eventually jump directly there. That means we will see soon a branch from one to seven. Okay, so when we do that, uh, when, I mean, when we are found, the uh, live uh, immediate post dominator, then we replace the branch and uh, update the statement, of course, and control flow graph. Uh, and then uh, for some cases, we don't have to do uh, anything more, but if uh, this uh, vertex that we branch to has a fee function, I mean, if it has, uh, well, if it has a fee function, then we need to update that as well. Okay. 
uh, and how to do that is uh, well what we what we need to do is to have the proper value for each operand when we come from a certain vertex and how to do that is described in detail in the book uh, okay and then uh, we mark uh, i mean we set the modified to true and uh, continue okay so if uh, there was some modification then we will simply remove uh, the dead vertices and we update or recompute the dominant tree okay so let's see what happens here when we process the vertex zero the only successor is live so we don't do anything then we look at the edge one to two and two is dead so we follow the uh, post dominated tree up from two to three and make the branch go there instead then we come to one i mean the edge one to nine and since uh, nine is uh, dead we follow um parents in the um, post dominated tree and get to seven since that's the first live one and then <coughs> we fix the phi function in seven Okay, then uh, when we come to three, we also um, get directly to seven. And then we can <coughs> remove the dead um, vertices and have a faster program. 